Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Sauce. It's the backup channel, backing Celeb up and bringing you all the breaking news. Happy Juneteenth, everybody. We's finally free, cause it's Black Independence Day. And I hope that everybody who's out there has a very good day today. Now, I was thinking about today, and I'm glad that the government made it a federal holiday. However, I was like, wait a minute, why do white people have the day off? I think that only black people should have the day off. And it should be mandatory for all white people who had ancestors who owned slaves to have to work today without pay. I mean, in order to get out of work, you need to show like a pass that shows that one of your ancestors was like an abolitionist or that your family came over here after like slavery was over. Aside from that, all you white people need to be at work. You should not be out here throwing your own barbecues next to me like it's all good. I mean, fair is fair. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let me know what you think about white people having a day off on Juneteenth. And while we're talking about Juneteenth, the other day a young African-American girl came online and she had a serious question that she wanted to ask. She wanted to know, quote, am I allowed to take a white man to a Juneteenth event? I am so serious, end quote. Okay, so basically this chick is dating a white dude and she wants to know if she can bring him to the barbecue. Okay, let me think about this. Hmm, I think that you can bring him to the barbecue as long as he's not like one of those white dudes who's running around rocking a Confederate flag t-shirt or has like a bottle opener on the bottom of his beach sandals. <laughs> but that's just me. Let me know what you think. Do you think that this black chick should be able to bring her white dude to the Juneteenth barbecue? Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, check it out. As you all know, YK Osiris was a trending topic last week after he tried to kiss Sukiyana without her consent. And after receiving mad backlash for physically disrespecting a young woman, the 24-year-old rapper apologized to Sukiyana both publicly and privately, and she accepted his apology. Well now, YK Osiris has jumped on Instagram once again to share another apology. In his first post, YK wrote, quote, apologize to my family and supporters. I keep letting y'all down. I just want to be a better person and focus on my purpose. And that's music. I love y'all so much for real. End quote. And then after that, YK wrote, quote, don't worry. I got a gift for y'all since I've been BSing for these past years. End quote. And then after that, he said, quote, I lost everything. My mind, my family, my love for music. I just need help for real. End quote. Listen, this young guy right here sounds like he's all over the place right now. And he really does need help. And he also might need some very strong black men to step into his life to help give him some direction and guidance. But here's my question. Do you guys think that he is sincerely apologetic for what he did to Sukiyana? Or do you think that he's sorry that because of what he did to Sukiyana, he might be at risk of losing his career? Because those are two different things. Let me know what you think in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, peep this. A lot of people have voiced their opinion that they think that Vlad is the feds. Because for some odd reason, every time like a rapper goes on Vlad and discloses some information, the FBI comes for him. Well, after Boozy, who was one of like Vlad's favorite people to interview, got locked up the other day, Troy Av has something to say. Troy Av said, quote, Next time you rappers go on this refugee face cow with Vulture Vlad and want to start Bo jingling around the topic of a for real real man, real ninja name, say no effing comment. Don't be a booty clapping show monkey for his eggplant eating rat stone agenda and a couple of measly dollars. If y'all doo doo stains need 500 to 2k, just call Troy Av, baby. I got you. I'm really rich and really independent and really take my kids to school in Lambos and Ferraris. Hashtag facto. If y'all hurting or crumb snatching, don't sell your integrity to Vlad the Vulture. He should be interviewing people in the Ukraine and fighting for his country because the Russians on the offense. Anyways, we'll interview you on the At the Facto show. We dealing facts though. All that picking and choosing and selective politics-ish don't fly my way." End quote. 
Okay, so after like Troy Ave says all of that, he continues to talk about how he's the realest of the realest, nobody's realer than him, he keeps it real because he's from the real streets and like nobody has ever kept it as real as him. All right, we got it. Anyway, what I will say about this whole situation is that all of these dudes keep talking about like Vlad and Vlad is the feds, but yet you turn on Vlad and they're sitting right there. Why? Because they take the check. Now, I understand that it can be very hard to walk away from like 10, 20K that you basically have to do nothing for except sit in a chair and tell a few stories. But you gotta understand, those stories might get you locked up. Listen, let me know what you think about Troy Ave going in on Vlad and also saying that if all of these little crumb snatching rappers need a little dough, they can come to him instead of going on Vlad's show. Now, check it, check it out. Cardi B was in Atlanta this weekend, and after she performed at 21 Savage's birthday bash, she decided to put on a twerking clinic in the backseat of a car. Now, while Cardi is twerking in a teal bodysuit with both cheeks all up in a camera, some dude, presumably offset, well, hopefully offset, starts to rub and smack on her behind before she turns around and shoots him the bird. Oh jeez, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of the whole thing. I'm tired of the whole like thought culture. I'm tired of our young women demeaning themselves. I'm tired of this like every time you turn around somebody's got their behind in the camera. I'm over it already. Listen, let me know in the comments. Are you over this already? Because I mean we get it. You have a big behind and when you shake it, it jiggles. We got it. Can the culture please evolve past the twerk? Now peep this, Flavor Flav is celebrating the major milestones that he's reaching when it comes to his sobriety. So the other day he jumped online to share his testimony and to say how thankful that he is for being free from drugs, alcohol, and nicotine. Flav, who said that he's been smoking cigarettes since the time that he was a child, said quote, important. I've changed. Today I'm three years clean from cigarettes that I started smoking when I was just six years old. Soon I'll be three years sober from alcohol and I've been 15 plus years sober from drugs. I'm proud to share my sobriety journey and thanks to my friends and family and those who support me. To everyone out there struggling with addiction, it's a real battle you fight every day. But I'm still here and you know what? I did it. And if I can do it, anyone can do it. To every media outlet that tries to capitalize on my goodwill, trending topics, and bringing up my past or old interviews for sensational clickbait headlines, do better and bring up my future. End quote. Flavor Flav went on to say, quote, allow people to grow and change in a supportive manner and don't let anyone hold you to your past. I wear the clock. My clock goes clockwise, not counterclockwise. Look forward, not backwards. End quote. Listen, let me say this. For everything that Flavor Flav went through, I mean, when he was on the drugs, when he was drinking, when he was smoking, whatever, he was always a very nice guy. And I am so happy to hear that Flavor Flav is doing well and he's really focusing on his health and giving up all of those vices. But, like Flavor Flav said, it's not easy. So we're praying for all of those people out there who are currently suffering from addictions and vices, and we're asking for those addictions to be broken in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, you might not see changes right away, but if you work on it day by day, eventually you're gonna see the changes that you've been looking for. And guess what? Yes, there's gonna be stumbling blocks, but just keep moving forward. And just know that just like Flavor Flav said, if he can do it, you can do it too. Listen, I am proud of Flav. And let me know if you're proud of Flav too. Because I mean, it couldn't have been easy to give up the drugs and the alcohol and the cigarettes that he was smoking since he was six years old. I mean, that right there is absolutely crazy. Like, where were the parents? Anyway, speaking of parents, Yesterday was Father's Day, and I want to give a shout out to all of those strong men who are out there raising their kids. Happy belated Father's Day, and I also want to share a statistic that we usually don't hear much about. Did you know that according to data, when black dads live with their children, they do dad stuff at a higher rate than their white and Hispanic counterparts? According to data published by the CDC, listen to this, CDC, not me. Black fathers are more likely than their white and Hispanic counterparts to feed, eat with, bathe, diaper, dress, play with, and read to their children on a daily basis. 
And get this, even when fathers are not living at the home, black fathers see their children more often than white fathers and Hispanic fathers. Listen, let me know what you think about them statistics. Look, we often talk about what black fathers are doing wrong, but today, the day after Father's Day, I want to celebrate black fathers for everything that they're doing right. So shout out to all of the black fathers that are involved in their children's lives and they're giving them that image and that likeness of a strong black male figure in their lives. Shout out to you. And in case no one has told you lately, you are needed, you are necessary, you are vital you are strong you are loved you are the bedrock of the black family and we thank you for everything that you do but we also thank you for just being you hey yo thanks for tuning in to celeb sauce your source for celebrity news be sure to like and subscribe to the channel peace